Hi everyone. I wanted to read to you from a sermon of Alexander McLaren's called Asa's Prayer. This is from the book that I've been going through, Leaves from the Tree of Life. This uh, particular sermon, it's just a little piece that I wanted to read to you because anyone who has Christian convictions may at times feel in the minority. And I would say this is just very appropriate for the time we're living in. So this sermon was based on Second Chronicles 14 verse 11, which reads, And Asa cried unto the Lord his God and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us. O Lord our God, for we rest on thee, and in thy name we go out against this multitude. O Lord, though thou art our God, let not man prevail against thee. So Asa, he says, Asa had had a long peaceful reign, which the chronicler traces to the fact that he had rooted out idolatry, but at length war clouds gathered in the south, and Zira the Ethiopian came against him with an army. So this is just the little piece that I, I specifically wanted to read to you. He says, one man with God at his back is always in the majority. And however many there may be on the other side, there are more that be with us than they that be with them. There is encouragement for people who have to fight unpopular causes in the world, who have been accustomed to be in minorities all their days. Bring God into the field and the little band which is compared in another place in these historical books to two flocks of kids fronting the enemy that had flowed all over the land is in the majority. The consciousness of weakness may unnerve a man, but the self-distrust that catches at God's skirts is the parent of brave confidence. We open the door for God's entrance when we feel our powerlessness. So I, w I would say this just seemed to me an appropriate time where sometimes it's hard to stand up for your Christian convictions in a society that is either criticizing it or putting it down all the time. Uh, another passage of scripture this reminded me of is in the book of Revelation. In Revelation, the call to the Christians of that day who were in persecution was found in Revelation 13, verse 9 and 10, what we might call the call to arms for Christians. It says, If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. This book, Book of Revelation, was, was given as something to help the Christians. It was, it was to help them under persecution to face that persecution. It didn't mean there was always uh, happy endings here, but to face it because they had God on their side. Uh, to, to the same area, Paul gives counsel to the same Christians, really, the Asian Christians, the F Philippians, the, the Ephesians. So in Ephesians, he uses a, a similar encouragement with a military metaphor 
And you, you probably be very familiar with this. In Ephesians 6, the suit of armor. He's, you're to take on the complete suit of armor. And it's described in that passage. So I just think we need to be encouraged to stand up for our Christian convictions. I'm going to link to a video called Revelation for JWs. Uh, which name brought persecution in Philadelphia? And for millions in China now. So there's a, there's a good um, description note in that particular video that I think would encourage you as well. Because this we were going through the book of Revelation, but it does have application for people under persecution, even today. Thanks for watching.